Hi, in our most recent jet video, we used a couple of very powerful electric ducted fans in series for the compressor stage for that hybrid jet. We produced over 40 pounds of thrust, we burnt an enormous amount of fuel and we're very happy with the engine. But we're also working on several different types of jet engines and we don't have any immediate needs for the components within that engine. So when we disassembled it, we looked at these powerful fans. We had a couple of very powerful 150 amp electric control units for these, these units, as well as an enormous number of batteries. So we tried to decide, what are we gonna do with that? And we came up with this. This is an electric bike, an e-bike, but with a difference. Rather than directly driving the wheels of the bike, what we decided to do is to mount the fans on the rear end to produce thrust, which pushes the bike forward. An interesting thing about e-bikes is they're incredibly efficient in terms of the use of power. A typical e-bike with a 36 volt electric pack that has 20 amp hour capacity contains about 1 million joules of energy and will move a bike like this about 20 miles an hour for one hour or a range of about 20 miles. To do so, that battery delivers approximately one half horsepower. If you were to burn gasoline, it would require about a quarter of a pound per hour of gasoline to generate that amount of uh, energy. And a gallon of gasoline weighs approximately six pounds. So you would have a range of 500 miles per gallon with an e-bike if you were to burn gasoline. But nevertheless, the batteries themselves provide a pretty good range. When you go to a design like this, you're going to cut your range to about 25% of what you would have if you directly drove the wheels. But there are a few advantages to this type of a design. The first one is that nothing about the bike itself has to be modified. We don't have to change the wheel. We don't have to interface with the drive system. We can put this on a bike that in no way is modified for the drive system. And that's important if you've got a very expensive road bike that you want to put a system on. You don't have to drill holes. You don't have to modify the, the bike itself. The second one is, obviously, it looks really cool. And when you hear it, uh, you'll also understand that it sounds really cool. As I told you before in the other videos, these are JP Hobby 90 millimeter diameter 12S, meaning 12 cell, meaning 50 volt fans. They can burn up to 5,000 watts continuously each. The ESCs that plug into them are 150 amp 12S ESCs, also marketed by JP Hobby. They plug directly into the fans and then are provided power by these cables that go into the batteries that hang on these soft, flexible packs on either side of the, the bike. The nice thing about this particular design is that we used a $15 from Amazon bike rack to mount onto the back of the bicycle. It keeps the thrust um, angle or the axis of the thrust low on the bicycle as opposed to high and unstable. And it also means that it's already fitted for the design of the bicycle that doesn't require any kind of drilling or modification of the frame. It's also very light and provides a lot of points for mounting the batteries and for mounting the support for the fans. The fans, because they come already from the manufacturer with these tabs coming out of the side, they're very easy to mount on a sort of double horseshoe frame. In our case, we used a doubly thick uh, post in the middle and some uh, narrower posts on the outside so that we can put both fans onto the same aluminum frame. You could do this in wood, you could do this in plastic. We happen to have a mill, so we did this in aluminum. And we then mount this by clamping it onto the rack. And the way we do that is we simply cut a couple of grooves in the bottom of this flat plate, cut a couple of grooves in some retaining clips that you can see below here and then squeeze these up with some small screws to provide a clamping force against the pipe of the frame. This is nice because, again, it doesn't require any drilling, doesn't weaken the frame, and also allows us to slide this forward and backward, but it gives a very secure mount when you tighten it down so that it doesn't wiggle or vibrate when the bike shakes. The other thing you'll notice here is these cables. 
the fans from JP Hobby are nice in that they have these small protective um, shrouds around their cables. They don't have the cables dangling out of the end of the motor or flopping around loose. It's a nice design feature of these fans. The very heavy 10 gauge cables that come out of here are then plugged directly into the ESCs with the shortest possible leads. With these very high amperage installations, you want the shortest possible leads at every point simply because there's resistance in the leads and as the lead becomes longer to lower resistance you have to make them thicker. So quickly the weight builds up and if you can keep things as short as possible you're going to save weight. The ESCs themselves are powered by these pigtails that are installed on each side of the bicycle and they're plugged into the power packs which use two 6S batteries, meaning six cell batteries, in each pack. They're wired up in series and the way that you do that, I'll show you over here on the table. Manufacturers of uh, these batteries and a lot of the electrical components manufacture what are called parallel and uh, series couplings that allow you to couple a series of batteries in to double their voltage or to double their current capability. They're already pre-manufactured like this. You can get them on Amazon for about six bucks each. They're a nice feature because unless you get the very expensive electric vehicle battery packs, typically 6S is what you're going to be limited to in most of the easily available batteries that you can get from the hobby stores. So to get the 12 and 18S kinds of voltages, you really are going to have to think about series winding. Back to the bicycle though. From the uh, ESCs, a couple of cables are then routed from the ESCs. These are the control cables that run up to the front of the bike where the control system is. In addition, because the control system will not operate everything at the high 50 volts that these batteries make, what we did is in one of the feed lines that comes from the batteries, we tapped out at one of the batteries at a 6S or a 24 volt potential we tapped out a 24 volt lead that leads up to the control box along with the control leads. This provides a more convenient 24 volt potential. One thing to keep in mind is whenever you're running any kind of power from these batteries, you want to fuse them. Every line that uh, we, we have in the system uses a one amp fuse in series. Uh, this one here you'll see uh, coming out of this bag is one of the fuses and these prevent you from uh, causing fires or causing a uh, breakdown of the battery if you get an accidental short someplace in the system and a bike vibrates a lot there's always the potential for a short. This thinner wire takes the 50 volts and sends it up to the control box for our gauges so we can read the output of the batteries. Each side has one of these high voltage leads coming from it but only one side has the tap because we only need a source of 24 volts from a particular battery and the power use is so low that it really makes no difference that we're pulling one battery a little bit harder in order to drive some of the electronic components. Led up along here through these spiral wraps up into the control box are all of the uh, voltages and the control signals that come from the ESCs. There's an on-off switch. There's our old uh, familiar uh, pulse width modulation controller. We put this on here because we had this, but they do make uh, finger mount types of uh, pulse width modulation controllers that would make this a little bit more convenient. We'll probably do that in the near future and I'd recommend that because it's just a little safer not to have to take your hand away to be able to control. These are two up to 0 to 100 volt gauges that measure the battery potential on each side. And uh, inside of here I'll open up the box and I'll kind of just show you the layout of what we've got inside of the box. All right, now, a couple things about control boxes. It's a nice thing to give yourself copious wiring so that you can move things away and work on them without having to use mirrors and lights. So we've got very uh, generous wiring inside of here that just folds away and also connectors that allows us to pull the module off if we're working on it or for whatever reason we want to repair something, it's always nice to be able to connect and disconnect uh, different components. We have the two gauges over here we have a voltage regulator because the pulse width modulation device only works up to 12 volts. A 3 to 32 volt, 12 volt output voltage regulator over here that feeds the pulse width modulation control. And then finally we have a switch that operates all of the functions up here. The switch does not 
switch the main battery power to the ESCs. In, in order to do that, we would have to run a very powerful relay uh, to the back of the bike, and it would be a nice feature, but we didn't bother to do that here. It's something you might think about. In any case, I'm going to fold this back up once, uh, once you've had a chance to kind of look at the wiring. But we have a common ground from all the batteries, so both sides are all to the same ground. Everything is grounded to the same zero volt potential. We have the 24 volt lead that comes in here. We use a different color wire just to make sure that we stay honest. We have the two leads, the two red leads that are coming from the back of the bicycle that feed into the voltage reading lead for these two gauges. There's a ground, there's a uh, 12 volt or a 24 volt supply, and then there's the high voltage reading line, which is the red line. This will read from zero to 100 volts, and that's hooked directly up to the output from the two batteries in series. So I'm going to put this thing back together again, and we will go through a little bit more detail. Now, an interesting thing with ESCs is they make them in a variety of different sizes. You can get some little 20, 30 amp ESCs to drive RC trucks all the way up to 350 amp ESCs that will operate at 100 volts. This, this thing will handle up to 35 kilowatts. You could drive a car with this thing and you can see the leads kind of support that idea. The, Differences between the ESCs, though, are mostly in capacity. Most of them do the same thing. They take a DC voltage, they convert, convert it into a three-phase varying voltage between the three leads, and that's what controls these brushless DC motors. When you power those motors with batteries uh, that are more available to the, the consumer, uh, the sort of hobby type of batteries as opposed to the electric vehicle batteries, you're typically going to run into a maximum voltage of about a 6S battery. This is a 6S 24 volt battery. And if you want to get 12, 18, 24S, the only way you're going to be able to do that is in series. So that's why we have the series connectors. But also something to keep in mind when you're wiring up your batteries is that you can wire them in parallel, as I showed you, or you can wire them in series. If you wire them in parallel, you run the risk that one of the batteries has a little smaller or lower voltage, uh, internal resistance and will be drawn down more aggressively than its neighbor. And that will tend to overheat that battery and limit the capacity of your system to the weakest battery or the most drained battery that you have hooked up. So in general, it's better to have larger capacity batteries that have a lower number of cells but run them in series because then you draw the same current through each set of batteries. Here's an example of another battery pack that we're going to be putting on the more sophisticated bike that my son is building out of carbon fiber. It's kind of a neat looking uh, somewhat Harley look and it'll hold up to five of these very large batteries so we could go a heck of a lot farther and it provides a nice case and the a nice thing about that is you can get a variety of different size cases uh, for very inexpensive, for very low cost, say on Amazon or bike shops, and hanging them on the back of the bicycle makes it easy for you to mix and match whatever kinds of cells that you want. When I turn the power on, I'm going to turn it on at a low level, you'll hear the sound, the gorgeous sound of this fan. This is about a half an amp. The power, the current draw is linear, but the thrust produced is not. It's quadratic. So most of your thrust is going to be at the upper end, but as I said, this thing has so much power uh, that you almost never would be running this thing at full speed. So uh, now that I've kind of shown you how this thing is set up, let me show you how it works.
in the uh, description below this video will include a list of the specific components we used for this build and where to get them so that it should be pretty easy for you to be able to duplicate this doing a little bit of manufacturing work and mostly just assembly you can put this on basically any bike you want so I want to thank you very much for watching and as I always ask please subscribe because it really helps out the channel happy building and have a great afternoon see ya